Assassin's Creed game review. A young man, just a bartender who doesn't think he's anything special, because those are the people this always happens to, is abducted and forced into a machine called an Animus, or the Animus, might be the only one, and he is made to relive his ancestors' memories. Thankfully, they're pretty interesting memories. Exciting, at least. He was an assassin, the ancestor, and you're going to be playing the memories, assassinating people. The operative words of this game are smooth and cool. Basically, it's as if Grand Theft Auto, Hitman, and maybe also Splinter Cell, maybe more Prince of Persia, met, had a child, and wasn't entirely sure who had the recessive genes. This game doesn't look entirely like any of those, but in spite of it being relatively linear, it's also free roam. You can climb pretty much anything, and you're going around killing people and then getting away, scot free. The basic gameplay is that you're given a target, then you have to investigate, which basically means that you have to do one of the few usually very simple objectives, then you, you can do all the investigations, there are six per target, or you can just do, I think, two or three, and then you know, get your mission, and, you know, the more you do, the more intel you'll have on the target, and there's also saving civilians from, you know, the corrupt guards, and this will give you also more tactical opportunities, such as allies which will Vigilantes, which will block the path. They'll basically grab the guard, one guard per person, by the arm and just try to hold him back while you run off. If you do get spotted, you will be chased until you can get out of the line of sight of them, which there will be a blinking icon letting you know, and then you can hide in either plain sight or just, you know, in, for example, a bale of hay, which is also apparently enough to save you from even the most death-defying leaps. And if you stay there for a couple of seconds, they will forget about you, even if you can literally hide on a bench between two people. They will not notice you. I don't know why they don't just question everybody who looks kind of like a monk, but who also has weapons, but anyway. You can also hide among scholars, which they wear the same white robes, but they don't have weapons, and they can sometimes help you get past guard posts, because scholars aren't questioned, but people who look exactly like scholars, but carry weapons are. And when you have the mission to assassinate someone, you get close to them and you either assassinate them stealthily using a blade that protrudes from the sleeve of your left arm, or you kill them in combat. And the game is fun. But it's also really repetitive. There is 
way too little variety to the objectives. Basically, it's follow someone and don't get caught and then, you know, either get really close to them or beat them up in an alleyway until they talk. Or, you know, assassinate some guards without getting caught. Sometimes there's a time limit and then there's the ever popular collect this item within the time limit and then return to where you started. You know, there's race type stuff. That is actually fairly fun. I will admit that. But the basic assassinations tend to be a bit too easy. I mean, if you're going into this expecting Splinter Cell during medieval times, you're gonna be disappointed. I really, really like Splinter Cell, and this one has got nothing on that franchise as far as challenge. About the setting, it is beautifully recreated. It is medieval times, during, it's during the Crusades, and you travel around Jerusalem, Acre, if that's how you pronounce it, or Acre, Masyaf, and Damascus, and you kill people representing all three Abrahamic religions. And as I said, you can climb everything, you can run across rooftops, Aladdin style. Sometimes you'll even be chased by guards across rooftops, and this is pretty fun. I mean, Anyone who's played Grand Theft Auto for any length of, length of time will tell you it is a lot of fun to be chased. Free roam and being chased and just, you know, no, I want to turn this direction and I'll see how far they'll chase me. That kind of stuff, a lot of fun. In this, it's just not quite as fun as it is in Grand Theft Auto games. They kind of suck, the people chasing you. It's easy to beat them in combat if you so choose even when there's a lot of them, and it's just not that difficult to get away from. It's kind of fun to hide in plain sight, to just exactly get away from them and then, you know, hide somewhere where they should be able to find you, but they don't, you know, you sit there, the glee evident all over your face, but after a while you just kind of get to realizing that that's all the game does have to offer. There's never... I mean, when you're playing Splinter Cell or Hitman, you really do fear getting caught because it could blow the entire mission. You may have to start all over, so you're very precise. In this game, you can just do almost whatever you want, and it'll just work out. That's one of the things where it's really smooth, and it's really just too smooth, I would say. It takes away a lot of the sense of danger. It's frankly way too free streamlined. I've already done an entire video talking about this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about why streamlining sucks, but basically, no matter what you do, it'll work out because it's so streamlined. You can't really do it completely wrong and it takes away a lot of the sense of danger and you're not really making the decisions you're basically just turning your character at some point you realize that's all you're doing you basically hold down a couple of keys and you run around or you sneak around but you know you can interact with everything so you know a huge environment interaction in this game so you know if you're running, okay, now I think I'll just run up the side of a building. Okay, now I think I'll run down an alleyway. Okay, now I'll hide in plain sight. It just, there isn't a lot of challenge to it, and you don't feel like your decisions really make an impact. It's not like life or death. It's just, okay, left or right. That's all. The climbing doesn't really get boring. I don't know how Ubisoft is doing this. I've played half a dozen games by them, at least, where you can climb, and it just never gets old. I don't know. They, they've they just, they've struck gold here. They've struck gold and diamond. It's just a ton of fun. I can see people replaying this game and just 
climbing everything, you know. In fact, part of the game is that you have to, I mean, other than just getting into certain areas, it's easier sometimes to climb than to sneak in because there are guards all over the place, but also you have to climb these viewing, you know, you have to climb towers and then you can s sort of scan that area for activity that you can partake in, you know, citizens to save or whatever. And yeah, that's an entire part of the game, just climbing these towers and then making these death-defying leaps into hay afterwards. Now, the the killing... Basically, to assassinate someone, you either use the blade protruding from your sleeve, or you use throwing knives. The throwing knives are effective enough, but once you get them, they kind of screw up the use of the short blade, which you get earlier than that, which is very effective sometimes in combat, but yeah, sometimes you're gonna accidentally throw a, a throwing knife when you don't really mean to, and I'm not sure they're even effective once you've already been spotted. I think the idea of the throwing knives is you kill someone that you can't necessarily get to without being spotted from a distance before you've been spotted. The Then you have a basic sword, which is what you'll be using most of the time during the fencing. And that's kind of it. The short blade is also effective in sh combat because it's kind of easier to get a blow in. The basic gist of combat is that you're constantly, they're constantly blocking your attacks and you have to knock them down and then wail on them while they're down or you have to counterattack, which is very very cool but it's annoying how it doesn't always kill them because it's really not difficult, it's again way too streamlined you basically don't control what you do when you counterattack. You just time the counterattack, and that's all. And he either kills them or he just knocks them down, and then you can try to kill them before they get back up, because once they get back up, they're going to start blocking again. You can also get lucky and just get a blow in, even though they're almost constantly defending, but the other two ways are much easier. The... There are some interesting characters, and the philosophy is interesting enough. It is kind of annoying how vague the overall plot is. Maybe not so much in the memories of your ancestor, but in the present day or near future, with the bartender, you don't know excuse me, exactly what's going on, and you never do, because the game just leaves you hanging. It throws a bit of a hint at you at the very end, or, yeah, and that's kind of it, you know. I guess they were just really hoping you buy the next one. All in all, the gameplay can be fun, but it's really repetitive you realize that you're just doing the same thing over and over. And the... the killing itself... the weapons that they do give you are cool and well thought out, but... I do think that they could have given you more opportunities, seeing as how you can climb anything and all that, why can't you kill from any position? And the combat is just far too easy. I mean, this is the, the same company that gave us the chess-alike fencing of Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. In that one, you fear getting hit, because it might mean that you lose because they'll wail on you if they can. 
you can't run away from the enemies because they'll just teleport to where you are. And you have to time it exactly right, find a hole in their defense, then exploit that hole, and then hurry up and kill them off before they get back up. There is no such thing in this game. I really don't know why they made it this easy, removed this much challenge from it. Again, the 3 slash 4 ancestors of this game that I mentioned earlier are all more challenging and while maybe not as smooth I could see myself replaying them more than this. I'm also not entirely sure there's anything unlockable. There are collectibles but I'm not sure there's anything unlockable. There's a level selector. You can replay any level that you've already completed. So yeah, that is my review of Assassin's Creed. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.